Welcome to TechLore. I reviewed IP Vanish around seven months ago, which you can find right here or in the description. And like every other VPN I have reviewed on the channel, I am going to do a six month update on it. The purpose of the six month update is to find out what's changed, what's improved, what's gotten worse, and if our past review is still accurate to this day. So the best way I found to lay these videos out is to put it into two parts. One, we're gonna go back and rescore everything, see if everything's still where it is, and two, we're gonna go through all the changes made to the service which I feel are important to point out. Let's go ahead and begin the video with part one. As always, security is weighted at 40%, and I gave it five out of five stars on my original review, and I said, quote unquote, no issues whatsoever. Now, as of today, I do have to disagree with that previous scoring, they do nail security, except they are based in the United States. So jurisdiction is in the five eyes. I can't give a perfect score on security with that in mind. They still hit all the other main points for security, including passing DNS tests. So it's gonna get four and a half stars out of five. But if your goal is absolute tippity toppity max security, get a VPN outside the 14 eyes. There is just no other way to say it. Speed is weighted at 20% and I originally gave them four out of five stars. However, I have completely changed the way I do my speed testing, so let's redo all of it. My ping decreased on average by 18 milliseconds, which is great. Downloads decreased by 8% and uploads decreased by 3%. Crazy speed improvement from them. It's actually one of the highest on the channel as of right now. Their speed is five out of five stars right now because it is freaking fast. Settings are weighted at 5% and I originally gave them five out of five stars on my old review. Now, six months later, having reviewed many more VPs, VPNs, I have a lot more to compare to, and I can tell you IPVanish is not a 5 out of 5 on settings. This is pretty inaccurate, but after using lots of VPNs, I was stuck between 3.5 stars and 4 stars for settings. This always happens when I review VPNs. And I decided I do think I would recommend IPVanish for the settings, because they do offer a lot of settings for not only simple, but advanced users. They're not going to offer anything like AirVPN, that's, why, that's 5 out of 5 if they do have something like AirVPN, but I think they do offer a great amount of settings for customization with your VPN connection. Usage is weighted at 15% and here is what I said. On Windows, personally, there is nothing wrong with the program, but it's not perfect. It feels clunky. On OS X, uh, first off, the login and setup is so poorly put together. You're a lot more limited on options and the UI looks pretty gross and outdated. On Linux, the story does not get better. IPVanish does not offer a Linux client. On my iPhone, I actually love the app. It's super nice, very easy to use. Click the setup, offers cool settings like fingerprint support, and it really gets the job done. On Android, the experience is also fantastic because two thirds of the mainstream desktop operating systems don't offer a good experience in my opinion, I'm giving IPVanish two stars. So I gave it a nice solid two out of five stars. And today, the Windows program has barely changed, so same stuff applies to what I said before. Still clunky, but definitely a functional program. I wouldn't say it's unusable. The mobile apps are still awesome. They still don't have a Linux client, and they did get a huge overhaul on OS X or Mac OS which is huge news. The Mac client is just like the Windows program now, but less clunky. The only major issue is the lack of a Linux client, which I subtract 1.4. So it scores four out of five stars. Great improvement on their end. It was nice to see that they improved that Mac client. Stability is at 20%. You need it to be reliable and stay connected. Originally I give IPVanish four out of five stars, not for any disconnects, but because I had lots of issues logging into their previous Mac OS program. Now it's an easy five out of five. No issues I had on any of the devices. I always stayed connected. I didn't have any disconnects in any of my testing and I had no login issues on the Mac client. Honestly, the biggest improvement was probably the Mac client. So the original total for IPVanish in my last video was 4.15, which rounds up to 4.2 out of 5, which is decent. It's TechLore approved, but it's definitely a good VPN. Now, uh, its new score is 4.6 on the dot, which is tied for the second highest on the channel. I think what this really does demonstrate is that you can change almost nothing visually about your program and still have a service be dramatically improved. There are almost no UI changes. There's very minor things that you can see in the program that are different between when I reviewed it seven months ago to today. And all I'm gonna say is just using the program in general feels a lot better. It feels a lot better put together. It feels more of a polished package. So 
good job for the small improvements. Some advice from me to get closer to that five star mark, get your jurisdiction out of the US as the highest one. The next one is add more settings for advanced users looking for max customization in their connection. Third, and it's the one I always tell every provider, get a Linux client. There are so many people that use Linux for security reasons and they're pretty much limited to AirVPN. They have the entire market for Linux users. Get involved with Linux users. This is my tip. Hello guys, welcome to part two of the video where I go through all the changes in IP Vanish. Now, I went through their blog and there really weren't that many changes. Things stayed pretty much the same like I mentioned before. First, and I've mentioned this multiple times now, they got a better redesigned Mac program. Better is an understatement. That is the biggest change, and it is significant. Obviously, if you don't have a Mac like me, you're not gonna care that much, but for reviewing purposes, I do have to keep all of you in mind. Second, they introduced beta programs for their programs, which is pretty awesome to test new features in advance. Just remember, there may be stability and security issues when using beta versions, so avoid them if you're going for that max security. Third, IPVanish released a VPN app for the very widely and insanely popular Amazon App Store to try to expand their reach a little bit. I wish they would expand to Linux instead of the Amazon App Store, which everyone uses, but hey, they are expanding, which is the important part, and hopefully it's a start to that Linux. That wraps up all the changes I could find. That's literally about it besides stability improvements and bug fixes. That's the video, guys. If you liked it, make sure to like it down below to see more of these types of videos in the future. If you're interested in VPNs, cryptocurrencies, and just general security on the internet, subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated in the future and join the awesome TechLore community. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and do not forget to follow me on social media and check out my website. That is it. Tech Lore is out. Have a freaking Lemuricious day.